today we're delving into a dark chapter of corporate history, the infamous Enron scandal no less. Know your history or be doomed to repeat it. It's a tale of greed, deception and the devastating multi-billion dollar consequences of corporate chicanery. It is really the most stunning example of corporate misbehavior I think I have ever seen. Now, for those who might not be familiar, Enron was once considered the darling of the energy industry. They pitch it almost as a new economic religion. Enron Online will change the markets for many, many commodities. It is creating an open, transparent marketplace that replaces the dark, blind system that existed. It is real simple. You turn on your computer and it's right there. So that's our vision. Uh, we're trying to change the world. However, behind a deceitful facade, the reality was the very opposite. The fatal flaw at Enron, if there is one you say, it was pride. But then it was arrogance, intolerance, greed. Enron was a Texas-based energy company founded in 1985. It rapidly rose to prominence as a powerhouse in the energy trading and utility sector. They were seen as pioneers using innovative financial techniques to maximize profits and boost their stock prices. All on the back of a conveniently deregulated market, where political lobbying had delivered unprecedented opportunities. But as we'll soon discover, their so-called success was built on a shaky foundation of lies and manipulation. To understand the scandal, we need to rewind to the late 1990s when Enron's stock was soaring and their executives were basking in the glow of success. They were not just an energy company, they were a financial wizard, or so it seemed. Enron's leadership, spearheaded by CEO Jeffrey Skilling and Chairman Kenneth Lay, portrayed an image of boundless growth and profitability. Investors, employees and analysts alike were mesmerized by the company's seemingly impeccable financial performance. Ken Rice has worked at Enron for 20 years. Enron has found a way to stay ahead of the curve. Little did they know, Enron's success was a house of cards, built on lies and arrogance, just waiting to inevitably collapse. We're going to move from mark-to-market accounting to something I call HFV hypothetical future value accounting. Whoa! If we do that, we can add a gazillion dollars to the bottom line. The unraveling of Enron's deception began when it became clear that their financial statements were a work of fiction. Behind closed doors, the company was hiding massive debt and losses through a series of off-balance sheet partnerships. These off-the-books entities allowed Enron to keep debt off its balance sheet, creating an illusion of financial health. It was financial engineering at its finest, or should I say, at its most fraudulent. The company used complex accounting loopholes and special purpose entities to manipulate their financial statements. Enron didn't operate in isolation either. Their auditors, the prestigious Arthur Anderson, were also knee-deep in the scandal. Instead of providing an independent check on Enron's financials, Anderson actively participated in the accounting shenanigans. Enron paid its advisors well. In 2001, the accounting firm Arthur Anderson received one million a week. Enron's law firm, Vincent and Elkins, did nearly as well. They turned a complete blind eye to irregularities, thus gleefully building the bonfire that would consume countless people's pension pots. Enron also enjoyed a super cozy relationship with George W. Bush, who, while governor of Texas, made phone calls to smooth business along, remove red tape, and reassure investors. Should we invest all of our 401k in Enron stock? Absolutely. He was best buddies with Enron's CEO and even had a pet name for him, Kenny Boy. What about the fact that George W. Bush calls Ken Lay, Kenny Boy? That's my nickname for my husband, which he overheard. 
The pressure to meet aggressive financial targets led to a cutthroat culture where employees were encouraged to push beyond the boundaries of legality. Actual recordings of Enron trader conversations emerged after its spectacular collapse. They could be heard gleefully plunging California into electrical blackout in an excited conversation. They were gushing about the millions they were scoring by doing this. Former Enron employees have spoken about the intense pressure they felt to meet quarterly goals and the fear of reprisals if they questioned the company's practices. This culture of fear and silence played a significant role in allowing the scandal to blow out of control. How do you keep your wife from smelling the stripper's perfume on you? And Lou said, oh, I've got a secret. So I stop in at a gas station on the way home and I spill a little gasoline on myself. A core padre of Enron guys used to go on these wild adventures. People broke bones. One guy flipped a Jeep and almost got killed. Those sorts of stories at Enron became legend. We mentioned the California blackouts and the criminal traders. Well, Enron engineered all of that. It created the culture and the rewards to drive it home. With monopoly-style influence in the energy sector, it orchestrated the artificial blackouts, fooling the energy operatives into shutting down grids for no real reason. By intentionally disrupting the power supply, Enron could then capitalize on the increased demand for energy. This gave them massive dollar windfalls and perversely boosted the perceived value of the company. When the rolling blackout started in California, there was definitely a lot of excitement in the air. It was something new. It was something that hadn't been encountered before. It was, how is this event going to affect the price of power? Hey, uh, this is David up at Enron. Uh-huh. There's not much uh, demand for power at all. And we're, if we shut it down, could you bring it back up in three or four hours? Oh, yeah. Well, why don't you just go ahead and shut her down then, if that's okay? Okay. Enron's meteoric rise was not just due to its own manipulations. Wall Street played a crucial role in fueling the hype. Investment banks and analysts were quick to praise Enron's financial innovations without understanding the risks involved. Of course, they probably would, even if they did understand. It's Wall Street after all. Enron's stock became a darling of Wall Street, with analysts remaining bullish even as warning signs clearly began to emerge. The interconnected relationships between Enron and Wall Street created an echo chamber of positivity that fueled the deception. Myriad failures in the legal and regulatory framework allowed such misconduct to persist. The Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, failed to detect Enron's fraudulent activities for years. Enron exploited the gaps in regulatory oversight, taking advantage of accounting rules that were outdated and insufficient. Their CFO, Andrew Fastow, hid company depths in a complex web of shell companies. The SEC's delayed response allowed the scandal to escalate to lunatic levels before any intervention. We really do want to be excellent at everything we do. Excellence, hopefully, in the ideas that we have. Excellence in the people we have. Excellence in how we treat our people. How we operate our plants. Deal with our customers. Protect the environment. Like everything else we do, we kind of set the standard. Now let's take a closer look at Enron's downfall and the collapse that destroyed the pensions of thousands. Enron executives were not only aware of the company's dire financial situation, but actively misled investors by inflating the stock's value. This created an immense false sense of security among shareholders, racking up the magnitude of the inevitable collapse. Several employees attempted to expose the fraudulent practices within the company. These brave individuals faced significant risks in coming forward including threats to their careers and personal safety. One senior executive, Clifford Baxter, sadly met his death by apparent suicide before giving his evidence. 
CEO Jeffrey Skilling and Chairman Kenneth Lay were among those charged with fraud, conspiracy and insider trading, despite the company shedding nearly a ton of paper in an attempt to hide its financial tracks. Skilling and Lay were eventually found guilty and served significant jail terms, reinforcing the idea that even the most powerful figures can be held accountable for their actions. While the Enron scandal had its epicenter in the United States, its shockwaves reverberated globally. Investors worldwide suffered significant financial losses as trust in corporate entities dwindled. Enron served as a stark reminder to the global community about the importance of transparency and ethical business practices. The aftermath of Enron led to a paradigm shift in how corporations were viewed and regulated on a global scale. But of course, the lessons learned have been mostly lost over past decades. Protesters heckled Enron CEO Jeffrey Skilling outside and inside during his appearance at Commonwealth Club. One of the protesters even brought a blueberry pie and delivered it herself. $132 million is what he made. In today's business landscape, corporations wield staggering influence and power. The Enron scandal gives us a great insight into just how fraudulent and damaging unrestrained corporate greed can become, especially when political and regulatory structures turn a blind eye to the scams. Never so much was this lesson needed as right now, as a moral vacuum threatens to overthrow the interests of regular people in favour of giant public-private partnerships aimed at generating enormous windfalls of money and power for the elite. I believe the only venue for me is the ride of broken dreams. Oh, you mean the Enron ride? Let's go! We're all gonna be rich! Ah! We broke even! Ah! If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, just remember, you can't trust the corporates, especially when they cozy up to the government.